Let's discuss the most common problem I see crypto investors make. A problem visualized by this chart or by this table. It's also hidden in this chart over here. And it's even in fancy colored graphics like this. So I recently had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a premium member. When you're part of premium, you can chat with me one-on-one -on -one in Telegram and we look at your portfolio. We look at your individual situation and how to potentially improve it. Now I'm not going to disclose the name of that member, but we can talk about the problem. We mainly talked about his pretty massive stake in VeChain. And VeChain seems to have done not much, right? It simply just went sideways more or less. But if you're following this channel, you should know by now that I like to look at relative valuation charts. And the reason for that is opportunity cost. When you can invest your money in something that's potentially safer, but that returns the same or even more than your altcoin, then you should probably not be heavy in that altcoin. Now this is the VeChain price denominated in Bitcoin and Bitcoin is arguably safer than VeChain. And here VeChain underperformed Bitcoin by more than 80% and that's in the last five years. Now there are many reasons for altcoin underperformance. We might not simply be in altcoin season. We might see a lot of token inflation. We might see a lot of new competition by other altcoin projects. There are many reasons, but the fundamental idea is that you should get outperformance versus Bitcoin if you take on more risk than by buying Bitcoin. And so what's this fancy chart over here? It shows what altcoin is in the top 10 in terms of market cap and during what period of time has it been in the top 10 and in this timeline which starts in 2017 we can see that only bitcoin ethereum and xrp had been in the top 10 for all of that time litecoin was in it until the middle of 2021 then fell out of it cardano had been in it then fell out then got in it again bitcoin cash was in it for a while then went out again we can see whenever an altcoin gets into the top 10, it tends to be there just for a brief period. And once it gets out, it rarely comes back in again. Right here, this is Dash. This is Ethereum Classic. Here we've got Chainlink, Tron. Tron seems to make somewhat of a comeback. But yeah, these things fluctuate. And more often than not, they just come in in order to later on disappear. This is another look at the same phenomenon. So this is coin market cap slash historical. And in here we can look at the top 100 at a certain point in time. So here on the 17th of July 2016, let's have a look at what the top coins were. Number three was Steam, a market cap of 280 million which now has a market cap of 88 million. A few jumps of attention over time just in order to then crash back down again. We've got the DAO, we've got NEM, we've got Mate Safecoin, Lisk, NXT, Hyperspace. Those were all coins at some point that a lot of people talked about. Emacoin, Factum, Peercoin, Game Credits, Counterparty, Tether at some point was smaller than game credits, right? Ruby coin, Revolution VR, Scott coin, Supernet, Mona coin. This was the top 50. Why is this so interesting? It's interesting because the top 50 coin that you now currently hold has a very, very high likelihood of being completely forgotten in a few years from now. So there's two ways to approach altcoins, right? You can either just try to trade them actively, try to ride those waves, or you can buy and hold and hope that your next altcoin is going to go through the moon and is going to dominate the industry. Now I'm somewhat on board with doing short-term trading if you do have the time and the skills and if you think you have the alpha, the long-term outperformance, you can time the market better than the average. If you put in more effort than the average, then you might get this compensated over the long term. But buying and holding an altcoin, hoping that it will do much better than Bitcoin and Ethereum is incredibly risky.
right we see how many altcoins enter the top 10 just in order to then disappear again we see how many of those altcoins are completely forgotten nobody talks about bill shares or safex coin or union coin or burst nobody talks about them anymore and so besides this idiosyncratic risk that you take on when you buy an altcoin and hold it over the long term Besides this increased competition, all the new entrants that enter the space, you also have the problem of token unlocks by early backers and the additional inflation of potential projects. Many projects issue new tokens all the time. And this is how we see the long-term performance in terms of price doing worse than Bitcoin. This is again VeChain. So the market cap might stay stable, but you holding that coin might still lose money because people that had locked coins before suddenly can sell them. Now let's look at something slightly different. Let's look at altcoins in aggregate. So say you would be buying all the altcoins on the planet and you're eliminating this idiosyncratic risk of not getting the right altcoin. You're buying all of them. You have a hyper diversified portfolio. Would that potentially work? And again, I have to disappoint you. This here is one pointer that shows how problematic altcoin diversification really is. This is the crypto unicorn index. So how many cryptocurrencies are there that are worth at least 1 billion? And this was at 42 coins during the hype of 2018. So over here, right, Bitcoin was at 20K. And since then, the number of billion market cap coins actually went down slightly from 42 to 38 right now. So less altcoins have a billion dollar market cap, but Bitcoin since then went from 20K to 30K. So it went up by 50%. So that's a first pointer. But we can also look at this in terms of dominance or how much of all of cryptocurrencies market cap is currently in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's just take those two as the blue chip cryptocurrencies and the rest as being altcoins. How is this currently developing? There is a way to time this to a degree. So this is Bitcoin dominance plus Ethereum dominance and it moves somewhat in a range between 82% and 58% of all of crypto being either in Bitcoin and Ethereum. When this is going down, then the altcoins are making a lot of gains. When this is going up, then more and more of cryptocurrencies money is in Bitcoin and ETH. And currently, it very much looks like Bitcoin and Ethereum is still taking away market share from the altcoins. So this altcoin season index on blockchaincenter.net has a similar oscillator. Here it is a bit more erratic. It moves up and down a bit more. This simply looks at how many of the altcoins are outperforming Bitcoin in the last 90 days. Okay, so it looks at the top 50 coins, looks at the relative performance to Bitcoin in the last 90 days. When most altcoins underperform, then this oscillator is very low. It is Bitcoin season. Bitcoin tends to do better. I personally prefer this oscillator though, the Bitcoin plus Ethereum dominance, because it is moving a bit less actively up and down. It looks a bit more at the macro picture, whether or not it makes sense to be heavy in alts or in Bitcoin. So there's basically three takeaways here. First, altcoins are mainly good for trading, not just for buying and holding over many, many years, because the likelihood of you picking the wrong altcoin is extremely high. Second, even a diversified portfolio of altcoins is likely going to do worse. There are not more altcoin unicorns than during 2018. Third, in the current market, altcoins are especially poorly performing. Bitcoin plus Ethereum dominance tends to rise as a fraction of all of crypto. So in that conversation with the premium member, I did not tell him to directly sell VeChain. He was holding this over many, many years. I simply said, it's important to understand those concepts and be aware of the risk. And to consider with that background, if the fundamental arguments for VeChain really outweigh the current dynamics we see in the overall market. I personally, especially in this current market, rather make money with betting on falling prices. I make money from altcoins doing worse than Bitcoin. You can bet on the relative valuation, the Bitcoin valuation of altcoins to go down. Now, making money with falling prices is actually easier than making money from rising prices. And that's because of the return distribution in crypto. 
very few altcoins outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum. The vast majority has very poor tokenomics. It has expanding token supply. It doesn't have enough people jumping onto the project. It has a lot of potential competition and that makes most altcoins underperform. So it is easier to bet on falling prices of the poorest altcoins than it is to find the needle in the haystack, to find the one altcoin that might do better than Bitcoin. If you just select a random altcoin out of the top 100, chances are that you're going to do worse than Bitcoin. The chances are probably above 80%. So it's easier to generate alpha on top of just holding Bitcoin by betting on falling prices of poor performers. And the first time where I did this very publicly on the YouTube channel was with the pancake swap token. So this is the chart cake relative to BNB. It really, really crashed. And we totally anticipated this crash more than 50% because of the unlock of the staking program of Cake. Now you don't have to trust me, simply just look at the history in premium here with the keyword Cake. We talked about this all the time, starting even from the 3rd of January, 2023. So this was over here. And so this is how I handle my videos. I never delete any premium video. I never delete any YouTube video. You can track back what I've said in the past and simply look at how this ages. And I'm for sure not right all the time, but since statistics are in our favor when we bet on falling prices, I am more often right than wrong when it comes to shorting altcoins. Now here's another example. This is Firecoin. This is falling relative to Bitcoin. It's still an open position. Then we've got Optimism. I have talked about this Optimism short already on YouTube and I still keep that open. I don't think that as to date, which is the 5th of June 2023, that the team and the early backers have already sold. Most of the price depreciation we see so far is probably from short speculative money such as us. There's also other very profit making positions. This one, for example, I'm not going to disclose this openly now. This is part of premium. Here's another one that we expect to very soon go further down again part of premium. And so that's why the relatively high price of 75 US dollars per month is worth it. There is real alpha, real outperformance in the premium membership. If you've got 5,000 US dollars that you're willing to dedicate to crypto investments, then I'm very sure that the money that you spend on premium will more than make up for it. The crypto market is simply that inefficient. It's way easier to beat crypto than it is, for example, the stock market, where there's now so many professional investors already in it. But I do understand how spending 75 US dollars on a monthly subscription might feel somewhat daunting at the beginning. But I did see how most people simply stay subscribed for the long term because of all of those opportunities. And so here comes the deal. If you are unhappy with the content that comes with premium, if you are dissatisfied, then I will refund you 100% if you message me in the first week. So you sign up, you watch all the videos, you download all the content you want, you check out the Telegram channels, etc. And if after one week, you don't feel like you get adequate value out of this, then message me in Telegram or email me and you get all your money back. I will simply just refund you within Stripe. I'm that certain that it's really worth it. So there's really no downside for you. There's only upside for trying it out. I really wouldn't know a reason why you wouldn't just give it a shot. So looking forward to seeing premium, looking forward to see you in the premium chats in the premium telegrams. We discuss various opportunities over here. And of course, thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.